the virtue that I pray for a lot and which I often lack, and maybe some of y'all can relate, is just courage, you know, fortitude, just being brave. It's hard to be a courageous, brave, bold Catholic in this age when the culture is going in another direction. And our next speaker I admire so much because he really is brave and bold, and I have so much admiration for him. His name is Terry Barber, and a little bit about him. He's a straight shooter. If you listen to him on the radio, you'll know that. Uh, he has founded uh, three apostolates of note, St. Joseph Communications, the Catholic Resource Center, and also Lighthouse Catholic Media, whom y'all may be familiar with those. He also has a great pa uh, passion for Archbishop Fulton Sheen, and he's been instrumental in repopularizing the old audio and video of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, who I'm sure many of you have great devotion to as well. He also has recorded some of the most famous uh, talks. Many of you, many couple decades ago, may have come across Dr. Scott Hahn's conversion story. Well, Terry was there and he recorded that. And so if you heard it, you have a, we all have a debt of gratitude to him for that. He's teamed up with another amazing, courageous uh, apologist, Jesse Romero, for radio shows like Reasons for Faith, Alive, and Full Contact Catholicism. And he currently, among other things, is the host of a wonderful program called the Bishop Strickland Hour, which just happens to air on our radio station every Friday at noon, and it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful show. So please uh, give a big welcome uh, to Terry Barber, our next speaker. I have more energy than I did when I was a youngster going to Fulton Sheen's funeral back in 1979. As you said, Bishop Sheen has been instrumental in everything I have done, and it was 14 years when I was 14 years old, I listened to some Bishop Sheen priest retreats, and it got me to go to daily Mass because Fulton Sheen explained to me that Mass, we're at that Mass today, we are, it's a reenactment of Calvary, that we're present at that one eternal sacrifice. And when we understand the Mass, which the Vatican II Council says is the source and summit of the Christian life, game over, baby. This is it, the Mass. So what I did is, 43 years ago, I wrote to Fulton Sheen, and through the propagation of faith, got permission to put his record records, LPs, back in 1965, onto cassette tapes. You guys remember that, right? And then CDs, and now an MP3 disc. And so, millions of these copies have gone out through Lighthouse Catholic Media, 8,800 parishes that are promoting it. And I brought this, some of them, for you. Not just Fulton Sheen, but on the back, I put a second disc on our Catholic faith, a catechism for children. Guess what, gentlemen? We're all children of God, right? Watch the video and it'll really help you in your faith. So that's something I wanted to mention. Also, I, uh, we just celebrated Divine Mercy, right? Not too long ago. I'd like to share a story about Divine Mercy. I know that many of you have miraculous medals, right? You know the story behind the miraculous medal, St. Catherine Labore and all that. Well, this is a true story that took place after World War II, 1946 in Germany. This is a story that I'd say put your seatbelt on because this story you'll never, ever forget. And the story is <clears throat> one gentleman was walking down a country road after World War II, and you remember the country had been blown up by the Allies in World War II, and he hears some ladies screaming, help, help, help. There's a young boy that couldn't swim in the lake, and he was drowning, and the ladies couldn't go and save him. So what happened? This man says, well, I can jump in and swim and you know, save the little boy's life. So he saves the little boy's life. Okay? The mother says, thanks for saving my son's life. Can I give you some money? Or No, I don't need any money. Can I feed you? And like the rest of us, we'd say, yes, I'm hungry. So he gives him, so the wife the you know, mother gives this man a nice meal. Now it's time to leave. And the woman takes this miraculous medal off the five-year-old boy and says, can I give this medal to you as a way of commemorating you saving my son's life? He says, yeah, why not? Puts the medal around his neck, and he's off and going. Now you know, historically, many Germans migrated to South America, Brazil, and there's tons of them went there. He went there. Unfortunately, that man became an alcoholic in Brazil. He was living on the streets for 25 years. 
Now put your seatbelt on. Here's where divine mercy comes in. The man's dying in a Catholic hospital. The nuns are praying to this, for this guy to make his peace with God because they know his heart's going out. And they try to say, can we bring a priest so you can make your peace with God? He says, no, get out of here, sisters. I'm, I don't need that. So the, con the girls go back to the convent. Other superiors there, they go, mother, there's a soul there. He's going to die soon, and we can't get him to go make his peace with God and go to confession. What can we do? Mother superior says, well, what did Our Lady say at Fatima? Souls are going to hell because no one is there to pray and make sacrifices. Start your sacrifices for that man. Pray hard. And by the way, there's a German priest who's just been ordained from Germany who's our chaplain here at the hospital. Ask him to go visit this man to speak in German and try and get him to go to confession. That'll help. They did the same thing. So that's what they did. They had the priest come. The priest comes to visit the man dying. And the priest says, you know, in German, hey, I noticed you got that miraculous medal around your neck. Did your mother give it to you? And the man says, no, Father, many years after the war, I mean, many years ago, right after the war, I was just walking down a country road, and there was a little boy drowning in the water, and the, woman, the mother was screaming, help, help, help. I pulled the kid out of the water, and the mother gave me that medal. And the priest says, you did that? Yeah, that was me. You saved my life. And then you know what happened? He said to Father, he gave him a big hug. <clears throat> you know, he says, thank you. Father says, yeah, thank you, thank you. And, and the guy says, Father, <clears throat> will you hear my confession? He heard his confession, and the very next day he died. Now go tell two people tonight at dinner that story. This is divine mercy example of what can happen when people are praying. Now, I share that story with you because it's so important that we give people opportunities to come back to Christ. And Father's homily, Father's talk today, touched me profoundly about the examination of conscience, the idea of asking God what does he want us to do every day to share that faith. And so I ended up doing something. How many of you know Ignatius Press? Does that name ring a bell? How about a guy by the name of Father Joe Fessio? The founder, does that ring a bell? Jesuit? Well, he... he twisted my arm. I mean, he married my wife and I. He uh, baptized all my kids. And he said, Terry, you need to write a book on how to share your faith with anyone. Because you, at my background was in real estate. You know, California is a little 40 million people, you know, state. But I was 13th in the state of California in real estate. I retired after five years. I was a door knocker. So I used to sell real estate on planet Earth. Now I sell real estate for heaven. And so this book, I was taught basic laws of selling. So what I did is I applied them to evangelization. There's living in the presence of God, teaching you how to share your... How many guys right here have formally been taught how to share your personal testimony? Raise your hand. I hope you have. A few of you. Out of all of us, six or seven. I have a whole chapter on that. You need to be able to know how to do your 30-second, one-minute, you know, five-minute elevator conversion testimony of your witness for Christ. And so I did this, and it's become a bestseller. I just have maybe 50 copies, or probably less now, but I'd be happy to mail them to you. So what I'm going to share right now is your theme is, how do you persevere in the faith? My, my answer to that is by sharing your faith. Because when you share your faith, you confirm yourself in your faith. Just like when you teach religion classes, it teaches you your faith. So this is what I did. I have a chapter called the Ten Commandments of Sharing Your Faith. And the first commandment is thou shalt pray always. Now, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. You mentioned Jesse Romero. I said to myself, what can I do for you individually that will help you and build up your faith? So what did I do? I took four of Jesse Romero's best talks at men's conferences all over the country. One's on pornography, one's on uh, the four last things, you know? All that's good material. I put it into a downloadable download, and it's free for you. Uh, at my table, you have to pull your phone out, you have to get it onto your, your a picture, your a camera, you just put it on this little cue bar, 
and you get a download. You, you put your email in there, and they download you four talks by Jess. So I, I want every man to get that uh, because I leave for Los Angeles later today, and it won't be available. So do that, and I think you'll enjoy it. First commandment, thou shalt pray always. Life of prayer, pray with people more than you read. St. Francis of Assisi. And I think Father made it so clear about the importance of prayer. I talk about adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. I can tell you hours of stories of people encountering Jesus Christ. Because when does Jesus Christ encounter us? When we're silent. Have you noticed that? Zip your lip, go in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and pray. I have seen conversions that I could tell you all day long, people coming Massive convert. I've had murderers come into our chapel and pray before the Blessed Sacrament, screaming. Uh, I mean, I could tell you so many stories that it's so important that we visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. I'm going to encourage you, as Fulton Sheen did, did for me, to make a daily holy hour. Now, not you can't do it always, but at least once a week. Spend that quiet time before our Eucharistic King. It'll change your life. More than reading... More than studying your faith, it's prayer before the Blessed Sacrament because that's our Eucharistic King. And as the Second Vatican Council talks about, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. Now, I left you guys a sheet, a cheat sheet in the back on my table. Uh, when, I, when we did the interview on Guadalupe Radio, I said anybody who wants to get a cheat sheet, what it is is biblical evidence for Catholicism. If I asked you, gentlemen, where in the Bible is the sacrament of confession? How many would you raise your hand and say, I know how. Take a look around, guys. Take a look around. One or three, five. My sheet will give you about 180 scriptural verses for in defense of the Catholic faith on Our Lady, Purgatory. It's all there. It's nice to have that, and the price is free. Okay, your mattress is free. You guys have that commercial out here? No, only in California. So that's the first commandment. Second commandment, thou shalt be prepared. Always be ready. First Peter, study your apologetics, mark up your Bibles, memorize scripture verses. Has, have any of you gone to Wichita, Kansas for our family conference for the last 22 years? Yeah, there you go. Um, I was there many years ago. I, uh, you know, we, we put that on for years. Now the diocese is doing it, which is great. I'm, I'm kind of a guy that starts things and then walks away from them, like Lighthouse and, and other things, and different Catholic stations, uh, radio stations. I think well, there were only five stations when I first started, and I think, what is it now, up to 700? 700 Catholic stations. Thank you, Jesus. So when I talk about apologetics, yeah, praise God, all for Jesus, man. That's all I can say, all for Jesus. Now, when we talk about apologetics, it's in defense of the faith, a little 15-year-old kid came up to me and said, Mr. Barber, thank you very much for giving me the Bishop Sheen recordings and Tim Staples and Father Bill Casey and all these guys that I've just learned so much of my faith. When I was at a Bible camp, and I was the only Catholic at the Bible camp, I got put on the, you know, on the, on the stage to say, why are you a Catholic? When they asked me, what parish, what church you're from? He was from St. Mary's. And he was able to defend his Catholic faith because he studied his faith at age 15, which is, not, is pretty uncommon because statistically, Father gave that statistic, that was out in Europe, 1997 statistic, young people by the time they're 23 years of age, 87% of them will not be practicing their Catholic faith. Gentlemen, would you agree that needs to stop? Absolutely! And the way that it does it is because of you. What Father just said, if dad is practicing the faith, <clears throat> the kids are in the 90% range living their faith. So that's how important you are. So this little kid said to the uh, people, you know, you guys, they said, you Catholics worship Mary. And what does he do? He says, excuse me, any of you gentlemen have pictures of your wives or your kids in your wallet? Yes or no? Yes, we have it. Do you worship that image? No. We don't worship Mary either. And he did a catechesis to all our Baptist friends about why the role of Mary is important. I just said, young man, God love you. So that's why the second commandment is about being, thou shalt be prepared. Now, 
I've distributed through Lighthouse and through the Augustine and all of St. Joe and all the different millions of recordings because I carry them in my pocket. I'm constantly handing stuff out, little seeds that God will water. Someone else will do that. So that's why it's important for us to know our faith. The third commandment, thou shalt be intentional. Evangelization is an attitude. Fish don't catch themselves. God will put you in situations to evangelize. How many of you gentlemen are coaches? Soccer, football, baseball? Raise your hand. Yeah, quite a few. <clears throat> Here's what happened to me when I, my kids were young. Nobody wanted to coach the soccer. I'm a baseball fanatic, okay? So soccer I did because the kids liked it. So I'm coaching, and I'd always pray before each game with the kids. And I'd ask God to protect everybody from being hurt. And basically, uh, you know, I blessed myself, and we prayed. About 80% of the kids were Catholic in Southern California, so there's no problem. But uh, the following Monday after our Saturday game, if you haven't noticed, I'm five foot four. Okay, I'm not six foot four. Here's what happened: some gentleman who has got his uh, daughter on the team had heard that I was praying with the kids before the game, and I guess that didn't go over well. So we're on, the, we're on the field, and he comes over, and you can see him walking like this over. But you've got to remember, I was a professional umpire up to AAA. I can handle anybody with God's grace. I'm used to having people shout at me. So this guy's coming over, and I see him in my peripheral vision. I said, oh, boy, oh, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, forever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide, from sinful stain will keep me free. And in death's hour, my helper will be. Bring him on. I'm ready. So I see him coming, and he's, he's yelling. He goes, hey, are you Coach Barber? He's about 25 feet away. And I'm thinking, it depends. <laughs> no. And I said, yes, how can I do to help you? Is it true? He's six foot four, dude. He's coming down at me going, is it true you're praying with the kids before games? And I said, yes, I do that. I asked of God to protect all kids from being hurt in the game, that we have a great game. I do that. And all of a sudden, he changes. He goes, I've been coaching here for three years. I took a year off. I've always wanted to do it, but I didn't have the guts to do it. Now I'm going to do that. And I went, Whew. thank you, Jesus. Why do I say that? We have to bring our faith into everything we do, at work, wherever, because we have to be that light. That's why we called it Lighthouse Catholic Media. Now, the fourth commandment, thou shalt not get discouraged. You know, it's not a numbers game. Remember, Father talked about free will. Hey, the only value in saying yes to Jesus Christ is you have the, you have the free will to say no. That's it. Free will. So when we talk about uh, not getting discouraged, if people say they reject Jesus, pray for them. Remember what Our Lady said. Souls are going to hell because no one's there to pray and make sacrifices. So they said, no, well, I'm going to pray for them. I gave them an opportunity. So here's the thing. Pe uh, Peter's Pentecost sermon versus James' martyrdom in the Acts of the Apostles, different results, but both were faithful to the call. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8, heavenly reward for those who evangelize. In the a book of, of James, you know, of those who bring somebody back, cancel a multitude of sins. I mean, the Bible's full of all kinds of things to help us not get discouraged. I'll tell you what happened to me. I'm at a men's conference. No, I'm not a men's. I'm at a it wasn't a men's, it was in California, it was a, a, a evangelization conference. And there's probably 300 people, and a young lady comes up to me and says, you remember me, gentlemen, whenever a lady says that to you, doesn't that make you feel a little uncomfortable? I did me, I'm like, um, should I? You know, you remember me? You taught me in high school 25 years ago. CCD, I said, oh great, God love you. Nice. So I thought that was it, she said, I'm not, no. Let me tell you what happened. You were teaching us about the Catholic faith, and you mentioned that if any of you ever get pregnant, go visit Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. He'll give you the right answer in protecting life. I used to always say that. And she said, and I said, well, that's great. I'm happy that you remember that. So I thought that was it. And then I went to kind of walk away because I don't stay in one place very long. She grabs my arm and says, I'm not finished. When a woman says that, shut up. <laughs> You're right? Sit down. So she says, well, I got pregnant. That's why I didn't, you know, stay in your class. I thought it was because I wasn't very good at teaching, but, you know, whatever. So she says, I went to the Blessed Sacrament because we had adoration at our chapel 24-7. 
she said, she went into the chapel, she was crying, and then she saw me praying in the chapel at the same time. I don't remember any of this. She told me this is what happened. And then she uh, got the courage to tell her boyfriend that she was going to continue to have the, you know, the pregnancy and deliver that baby. And I said, well, that's great. I'm congratulating. I mean, I'm not, you really touched me. Thank you. Any you know, good we do comes from God. We thank him for it. She says, I want to introduce you to my daughter. Brings up her daughter. She gives me a bear hug. She said, this is the guy that helped me make that decision to keep you in my womb. Why do I say that? We never know what's going to happen. How many times you're sharing the faith and you go, well, whatever, leave it to God's business. Because on the other side, when we take our exit interview, which is, you know, a particular judgment, these things will come up and we'll know everything when we get to heaven. The number, fi the number five commandment to sharing your faith, thou shalt stay motivated. You listen to Catholic radio here, Guadalupe Radio, you got to listen to that. You got to listen, you got to read good books. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to give this to your pastor, uh, Bishop Athanasius Snyder. I bet you nobody knows who he is. How many people know who Bishop Athanasius Snyder is? One, two, Kazakhstan, he's the bishop, he, was, he grew up in Russia. He's probably the most outstanding bishop in the world, okay? He wrote a book called The Catholic Mass. I did three hours of interviews. I never do that, but teaching people what the Mass is. You can go to VMPR, Virgin Most Powerful Radio. You can get it there. Uh, you can go to Sophia Press, the publisher, and get it. Get that book because once you fall in love with the Mass, game over. Your faith is so strong because it's a Eucharistic. So that would be my recommendation. But so here's what happens. How many of you have been to a uh, you know, dinner you go out to eat, you have a great meal. You can, that was a fantastic place. Like last night, I went, wow, I had some fish dinner that was like the best ever. Of course, I'm in Texas. What do I expect, right? But here's what happened. My friend tells me that you go to business, you go to a, a dinner to sometimes take care of signing of contracts for business. We've all done that. And he's there at this fancy restaurant, and the other guy doesn't show up. So what does he do? He's a Catholic. He's an evangelist, like you. He blesses himself before he eats his food. There's an elderly lady across from the table eating alone. She notices that they bless themselves. He blesses himself and says, young man, why did you do that? He gets up and says, why did I do what? He didn't even know what she's talking about. You went, well, I blessed myself because everything I have is a gift from God. And life is short, and eternity is forever. And I just want to thank Jesus for every moment and blessing my food. And the woman starts to cry. Why are you crying? Well, I just lost my husband after 62 years of marriage. She's elderly. And I said, he says, I'm so sorry. Um, we will pray for your husband's soul because the greatest thing we can do is if he is in purgatory... To pray, have, ma have you had masses offered for him? No, I haven't done that. Well, it would be good for you to do that because you loved him in this world. You can love him into the next. And now she starts like, I can't believe you're doing this to me. Said, well, what's wrong? She's crying. The waiter comes over and says, what did you say to her? What do you mean? She finally gets her composure and she says, young man, I want to thank you for what you said to me because I had planned to commit suicide after this meal. I had no reason to live after my husband's death. But now you've given me reason to live, and I thank you. That's how powerful even just blessing yourself at a, at a public restaurant. So keep that story in mind the next time you uh, go to a restaurant, because it's powerful. Now, this is a very important commandment. Thou shalt be personal, kindness. Don't be a bully. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's a theme for evangelization. You, they need to know that you care for them. Now, this is a, uh, a greeter. You guys have greeters at your churches? Do you do that out here in Texas? I bet you do. We have it in California. And here's what happened. My friend, Jose Robles, out in South El Monte, rough area, he's been there for 12 years. And when his young family comes into the church, they uh, first 
no, no kids, and they get married and have kids. Now they're up to three kids, and they always come in. You always say, hey, nice to see you at church. Have a great week on the way out, and that's it. But this particular weekend, Jose says, you know, I'm going to get them a, a greeting card because I see this young family coming in. They're just young, three little kids. I'm just going to give them a greeting card that says, congratulations, keep up the good work. You're in my prayers. Cost them a couple bucks. Well, when they gave him the card, the husband and wife look at it, and they're like really moved by it. And he's like, well, why are they moved so much? Well, it's just a greeting card. Remember, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Well, after Mass, they didn't just say goodbye. They said to the usher, the greeter, can we talk to you? Never said that in years. But yeah, sure, what's up? Well, we just wanted to tell you that this was going to be our last Sunday Mass as a family. My husband and I are getting a divorce. But because of that card you just gave me, we have decided we need to really work out our problems and our differences in our marriage. Can you help us? They went to Retrovite. They got their marriage back together. And they're still married today. Now, you see how important it is to, you know, be kind there was a lady with three kids today coming into daily mass. And this is something I do at the airport. I want you to do this. It works. When you see a young mom with the little kids and little babies, say, Mom, keep up the good work. You're changing the world one diaper at a time. And mom always appreciates that. And it's true. Paying a compliment to people is really inexpensive. And it really does a well when, it share, when you share the faith. Remember this, 75% of Jesus' miracles took place when, he, uh, when he, he, was, he got interrupted. So, you know, in radio, we're always getting interrupted. Uh, you got to get on the air and somebody wants to talk to you, some phone call. And so it's just, I have found that, that uh, I want to imitate Jesus on that, that uh, that's when the ministry really takes off. All right, the seventh commandment. How many of you have been to the Grand Canyon? Raise your hand. Yeah, man, look at how many people are in there. All right, well, I used to take my kids on a Grand Canyon retreat with the priest, and we'd have four or five days down there in Havasu Falls. You'd walk down 13 miles up or down and back up. It was great. Confession, you write a letter to your son. It's beautiful. Something I'm sure you guys do here with the Acts. So... What happens is, I'm with a good friend of mine who's a very erudite attorney who's running the show. But he's not, he's very uh, proper. Everything is proper. I'm the opposite. I'm kind of, you know, what you see is what you get, baby. So here's what happens. There's, we're, we're at the, with, with the priest, we're down at the bottom of the waterfall, and some Hell's Angel motorcycle guys decide to come down to visit with us. But they were using bad language, okay? And Mark wanted to tell them, my attorney friend, to shut up. I said, Mark, can we, can we ask our guardian angel to intercede here? Because the unemployment rate for guardian, rate, guardian angels is way too high. Put them to work. So we said our angel prayer. And then in my book, I explain about asking questions to share your faith. So I said, Mark, can I just, can I say a few words here? Yeah. So they're coming down, and I've got the big umpire voice. I said, gentlemen, can I ask you a question? What are they going to say, no? Yeah, what is it, dude? They're from California. I said, gentlemen, can you tell me what construction company built this canyon and this beautiful waterfall? Was it from Los Angeles or from Phoenix? And the next thing they said, you'll make, make you laugh. He says, the group will say, dude, what have you been smoking? And so I said, gentlemen, would you agree that God made this waterfall and this canyon? Get yes answers. Yeah, we can do that. Now they're getting closer. And I said, do you, do you gentlemen think it would be a good idea to thank God for this beautiful waterfall? Yeah, we can do that. Well, here's Father Johnson, and, I'm, and we're in a church group, and we're delighted you come to, to pray with us. No more bad language. We prayed with them. We evangelized them. No more problems at all. Well, how did we do that? By sharing the gospel. So I want to remind you, I really mean this about your guardian angel. Your guardian angel is your partner for life in the sense of the spiritual life. His job is to get you to heaven, just like your wife, right? So count on praying to your guardian angel every day to ask him to help you stay faithful. And when you have temptation, think about 
that your guardian angel is with you at all times. And I think that will help you in your walk with the faith. The eighth commandment, thou shalt commit, thou shalt admit when you are wrong. You don't have to be perfect. Be humble. If you don't know the answer, go out and find out what the answer is. I'm sure you know that on the radio, people ask us questions. Like, I don't know all the answers. I say, dude, that's a great question. I'll get back with you on that. Because you don't make up an answer if you don't know the answer. It's just be honest with them. So sometimes people will ask you questions at work. You need to, to know. Now I'll give you an example. Back in 08, we had a real estate crunch. You guys don't have that out in Texas. But California phew, went down like it's going to in, in a few. And it, it's doing it now. Watch. Trust me. So my friend loses his commercial building. So his friend asked me to help him move all of his stuff out of the building because I have a truck and a trailer. So I'm there, but the guy that's watching the building is really a knucklehead. That's a nice word. He's, he's more than that. He, but he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's just yelling at us. He's cussing at us and telling us, hurry up, get this stuff out of here. So I, I, I uh, overwhelmed him with kindness. Here's what happened. He lost his cell phone in a 40 by 20 trash bin. You know, you throw your trash in these big bins, and his phone went there, and he's, he lost it. And he's really mad because he doesn't have his phone. So I offered to help find his phone, even though he treated me like trash. You get it? So I went into the trash can because I'm small, and I got, his tra I got his phone. I found it. It took me about a half hour. I give it to him. He doesn't thank me. I said, God bless you. I'm glad I could help. That was it. And my other friends are going, you see, he doesn't even appreciate that. Oh, he will when he tells somebody the story. <laughs> He's an idiot. In other words, he should have at least acknowledged that we went and helped him. But you see, it'll hit him later. So don't worry about the results at the time you do some kindness, kind act for somebody. Because you did it not because he's, you do it because you love him. And whether they, they want you to do it or not, uh, you know, don't worry about it. And I'll, I'll give you one more quick story of how important evangelization is with your kids. Huge. When I used to ride a bike when my kid was five years old around the block after work because he loved riding, you know, he was learning how to ride. And we ran into some Mormon missionaries. And, of course, I, this is how you get into a conversation. Can I ask you a question? What are they going to say? No, they're Mormon missionaries. Got into a conversation with them. I asked them if they were formerly Catholic. 80% of them are. And bottom line is, my, I asked them, well, can you, if you were a Catholic, then you knew the Ten Commandments, right? Can you name the Ten Commandments? No. How about the Seven Sacraments? No. So I said, Joseph Fulton. He's named after Bishop Sheen, Fulton Sheen. And I said, Joseph, what are the Ten Commandments? Boom, what are the Seven Sacraments? I said, gentlemen, would you agree that you left the Catholic faith not knowing the Catholic faith? But you see, what happened there is my kids now are apologists. In their industry, they now love talking to non-Catholics because I bred them on that. And we need to also educate our kids so they have confidence to be able to answer these questions because when the kids get into, especially high school, they're going to get hit hard and they need to know their faith. And dad needs to do that, not so much mom. Mom can, but when dad comes up and has the answers, Man, Dad, I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Now, I wanted to, because I, I, how many minutes do I have left to someone I, I want to go over? I have 10 minutes? Good, that'll help me uh, do a couple things. I wanted to share with you something from a saint. How many of you remember St. Pope Felix III? Nobody. You know why? You do. It was, four, it was the 400s, similar time of history. Here's what he said, and this applies to us. Not to oppose error is to approve it, and not to defend truth is to suppress it. And indeed, to neglect to confound evil men when we can do it is no less a sin than to encourage them. Gentlemen, Father nailed it when he said we live in a culture that, left, that God is out of the uh, equation. We have to bring God back in. That's your job. And I would say to review it, because uh, I'm not going to get to all Ten Commandments. To review it is we need to know our faith, we need to live our faith, and love our faith. And that's how you stay perseverant in the faith. I know that there's 20 priests here to go to confession. I don't care. All the talks mean nothing. If you go to confession and 
That's the greatest thing you can do for the today, is to encounter the merciful face of Christ. So I want to really encourage you to get to confession. Now, I also want to re really encourage you to do a couple things. Father talked about the interior life. And it's very important that all of us have virtue. A friend of mine put together a book, How to Be Somebody, Cultivating Interior uh, the interior garden, full contact Catholicism. It's on the saints, story after story. You put this on your bedside. After you do your examination of conscience, and as Father said, don't beat yourself up. My approach is a little different. After you do your examination, and you say your act of contrition, then count your blessings of the day. An attitude of gratitude is welcome just about everywhere, gentlemen. And that's why I would encourage you, when you do your examination, to also count your blessings because it's so important that you do that. Now, I have to give you a Bishop Fulton Sheen story and then I'm going to leave you because I couldn't do it without any of this work that we've done. Millions of recordings have gone around the world. It's Bishop Sheen. He got me engaged in the Mass and the Eucharist, Our Lady. Anything you can read, go to YouTube, type in Fulton Sheen and it will change your life. Bishop Sheen is that good. Here's the story. General, gentleman is dying of cancer. He goes into the hospital. They tell him he's got leukemia. He's in Australia. And he says, wow, I'm, I'm going to go to another doctor to make sure my, you know, prognosis is right. He goes to three guys. They all say, you're, you're dying. Make your peace. Put your things in order. So he goes to the bar to drink. And the bartender's a Catholic evangelist. I love it when a bartender's a Catholic evangelist. And the guy goes, hey, dude, what's up? What are you, what's your sorrows? He says, well, I got cancer. I got leukemia, maybe a month or two left. He says, well, you know what you need to do? You need to go to Lourdes, France. What's that? He's non-Catholic, so he educates him about Lourdes. He says, well, what do I got to lose? He goes to Lourdes. I'm speeding up the story. He goes into the bath water and feels like well, something's going down. What is happening? I'm all warm now and something's, by my butt. well, anyhow, I go back home. I go to the doctors, doctor one, and say, look, can you give me an update on my leukemia? How am I doing? There's no leukemia now. I said, Wait a minute, let me go to the second doctor. No leukemia. Third doctor, no leukemia. The dude walks over to a Catholic church, bangs on the rectory door, says, Father, I want to become Catholic. That's the story Fulton Sheen tells of Our Lady of Lords, who he had been there, I think, 28 times because he's had a great devotion to her. I want to also share with you a friend of mine who's a nun today. In other words, it's prayer. My friend Fidel Jimenez had a little three-month-old baby dying. He went to Father Aloysius in L.A., whose cause is up for canonization. And he had just, been take, uh, had just come out of an operation on a heart operation, so he was still at home. And my friend had such faith, just like the gospel, he brought his daughter to Father, like he brings to Jesus, he says, Father, my daughter's dying of leukemia. Can you please pray for her? And the priest says, Fidel, Jesus is going to hear your prayer. Your daughter's fine. Go, just like the gospel story. He goes back to the doctors, and the doctors said the same thing. The leukemia isn't there for this little girl. Now that little girl, are you ready for this, is now a cloistered nun today and what is her role? Praying for priests. That's what she does 24-7 in her life. Why do I tell you these stories? Because God is alive today, and I want to ask you to consider making everything you do a sacrifice and to offer to God as an act of reparation for the sins that he's offended. And this is how God speaks to you in silence. And I would say also that I think is important for everybody, and that is we must prepare ourselves right now, gentlemen, to suffer many trials. You know, remember Sheen said, without Good Friday, there's no Easter Sunday? <clears throat> These, such as we will demand us uh, to give up even our life. We have to have a total dedication to Christ, and with our prayers, it's possible to mitigate the coming tribulation. But it's no longer possible to avoid, avoid it because only thus the church can be renewed through suffering. 
How many times has the church sprung up after great suffering? It's time, too, will be the same way. And I will say this. We know many people have left the church because of scandal. You know what I say to people who left the church? Man up! Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. We don't worship a priest, a bishop, or the pope. We worship Jesus Christ. Don't use that as an excuse. Don't, you know, leave Peter because of Judas. And so if you've come back to the faith right now, come back with both feet on the ground, knowing that through Jesus Christ and through his church and through the sacraments, we can handle anything. And I will encourage all of you to, again, study your faith, make it a lifelong opportunity. I want to leave you on something that, again, I had, thank you, I had my son, who's named Joseph Fulton, in high school, and the teacher at the Catholic school wanted him to write a paper. Dr. Scott Hahn said, man, I can't believe he got this, but it was because he was taught with formation under St. Thomas Aquinas. There's a catechism out there. It's a mystic philosophy. Good philosophy breeds good theology. That's an old axiom. And my son wrote this, and I share this with you out of joy that he could write all this. He said, what is it that makes us human? The question has plagued the mind of philosophers for centuries. It is the ability to reason, the will to survive, the heart beats within our very being. The inner sense of belonging to the human community as a whole is something much more simpler than all that. I believe that what mainly sets us apart from creatures on our planet is our immortal soul. And as two faculties, intellect and will, he learned this from St. Thomas. We won't learn this normally from anywhere else. On earth here is only a gateway to our eternal happiness. No other creature can achieve. He goes on and on. Why I say this is because we know life is short, eternity is forever. Last time I looked, gentlemen, nobody gets out alive. That's it. We're going to face our, inner, our exit interview. Please live in the state of grace. Every day we talk on the radio, I say, Jess, what state should we be living in? Phoenix, Arizona? Nope. California? Nope. Texas? Nope. The state of grace. How do we do that? By staying close to Jesus and the sacraments. So I want to encourage you in these last minutes to remember, pick up Jesse Romero's four talks for men by going over to the booth and just picking your phone out and picking it up for free. I'm just, you know, going to give that to you. There's also a barcode for all of Scott Hahn's material. Someone, someone said they're reading Rome Sweet Home. How many have read Rome Sweet Home? Yeah, 33 years ago, I mean, I printed 1.1 million copies through Lighthouse 15, 10 years ago. And that book has just done, you know, in Spanish and Chinese, it's gone all over. Well, when Scott Hahn did his conversion story, as you mentioned, um, my wife and I had just come back from our honeymoon. And I had said this recording would be really touching. Well, I was that young couple that they talk about in that book, and now, 33 years later, millions of those recordings of Scott Hahn have gone all over the world. And I, you know, I say any good that we do comes from God, we thank him for it. But gentlemen, I'm a simple guy. I have no PhDs. My wife has a master's in biblical studies. She's on our network. But what do I have? I have common sense. And can I tell you, common sense ain't that common. We need common sense Catholicism, the fundamentals of the faith. And I ask you, I'm going back to California. I got to go back to Sodom and Gomorrah to evangelize. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Pray for me. And I hope someday to come back to Texas. And I hope that all of you here are going to evangelize your family first and then the culture because you are the light of the world because Jesus Christ lives within you. You are baptized. And again, I want you to get mentored by Archbishop Sheen, whether it's the YouTube or his convert course, Life is Worth Living, because this will help you become sharers of the gospel. And I will ask you, the last thing, is you need to have your strong faith. How many of you ask Jesus Christ every day for stronger faith? Be honest. Raise your hand. A couple. A couple more. Start doing that every single day. Ask Jesus Christ for more faith, and your faith will grow. Last thing, how many of you are married? Okay. I'm, we're doing a seminar. You ever hear the book, Three to Get Married? 
It's Fulton Sheen. It's on our website. It's free for you to download. Go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Fulton Sheen says, gentlemen, your love for your wife will not last because you're a tough dude. I kind of interpret it. He said, because you're strong. No, your love will last because you have the power to renew it. Will you go home? Yes or no to this answer. Will you go home and renew your marriage vows with your wife? Yes or no? Thank you, because I'm going to tell you, do it on a regular basis. That's how your love stays strong. And have your wife repeat her vows that she did decades ago. And that's what Bishop Sheen, really his theme is, three to get married, you, your wife, and God. May God richly bless you, and let's pray to you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. We give thee thanks, almighty, all merciful, and all loving God, for all the blessings that we have received from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's pray for the poor souls who weren't here. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph, we love you. Save souls. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.